Hello and welcome again to this edition of Phi TV. We are here at Florida Internet and Television's brand new studios. Yes, we've been coming to you from our technology pavilion, but today we're in the new studio. I'm once again joined by Jim Saunders of the New Service of Florida. Jim, welcome to the show. Thanks. Beautiful here. Yeah. You're the first guest, yeah, man. Yeah. You're the first guest. So uh, how's that brand new car smell? You know, you know? Smells good. Smells good. I, you know. I might be bringing it down a little bit, but that's okay. All right, so 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 we're here to talk about politics. Well, policy is way behind us with session, and we are we are fully into campaign mode. Let's start with the governor's race, and let's let or sorry, let's start with the Senate race, and let's start with Governor Scott and Bill Nelson. What's going on? Well, Governor Scott's out there uh, making appearances every day, and and he's uh, he's getting all over the state. He got to Israel last week, which supposedly was a, that's a, a piece of Florida. It's yeah, a little, it was it's an island, an right? official visit, right. uh, state visit, but you know, I think there's a little politics involved mm -hmm. in that as well. Always. I mean, one of the things, the narratives that the, the, the Scott people are trying to, to push at this point is that, that he is the energy candidate. He's out there, uh, you know, getting around the state, talking to a lot of groups, and mm -hmm. that Bill Nelson, the Democrat incumbent, is not. And that, that you know, where's the signs of life for Bill Nelson? I think it's probably too early to draw many conclusions about that. Right. But that's the narrative that they're trying to push out there at this right. point. Any numbers uh, in polling showing Well, showing the, the polls that I've seen have been pretty close. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, uh, but uh, it uh, we've got almost six months still to go, so right. a lot could change. But but it looks pretty close at this point, and I think we're going to have one of the most competitive races that uh, for a Senate seat that we've seen in a while here. Right, right. And uh, there's going to be big money pouring in. There already is. There's ads being run already, mm -hmm. uh, and um, you know the Democrats are they need to hold that seat if they have any chance of of winning control of the U.S. Senate. So uh, so you got to expect there's going to be a significant amount, amount of money uh, coming in behind Nelson, right, right. Uh, too. Yeah, we're seeing in our industry, we're seeing massive buys on, on media buys for uh, both broadcast and cable. So uh, these guys these guys are putting it all on the line for this race. Well, Is Governor this Scott's, the biggest race of the nation? I mean, it's well, got to be one of them. Well, the biggest of the nation because there's, there's some of these swing seats that Democrats won or uh, really need to hold that, that you know, they won sort of... Uh, Conservative seats, if you would, mm -hmm. uh, in 2012, and they're they're struggling. They're going to have to struggle to hold those. So I'm not sure it's the biggest race in the country, but it's mm -hmm. certainly one of them. Yeah. And uh, you know, I mean, Florida being Florida, <laughs> right. who knows what's going to happen? But uh, but it's also going to be an expensive race, and uh, and we're going to be seeing a lot of it, uh, a lot of both candidates. 900 probably. plus billion GDP. It's probably a big state and important on that federal yeah, level. Yeah, I mean, so. you know, Tallahassee's pretty much shift, shifted from policy mode of the early year, to, early in the year to uh, full blown campaign yeah. mode yeah. around here. All right, let's step back down to the governor's race. So, so just last week, uh, we saw Speaker Corcoran officially yeah. step out of the race and endorse Putnam. What does that do to the Putnam DeSantis race? Well, I think the the biggest thing it just clarifies. I mean, there was always this issue out there about what whether Corcoran was going to run and what influence he would have on that race, whether he would pull voters away from DeSantis or Putnam, for that matter, or whether he would have much of an influence on it. But him him uh, staying out of the race, just in my mind, it clarifies that you got one-on-one -on -one now. Right. And they're very different. I mean, you know, Putnam has been here for forever, it seems, in terms of of his knowledge of the state being, uh, he's been in the agriculture commissioner for eight years. Right. And, uh, you know, whereas DeSantis is running truly as an outsider. Right. And, uh, you know, he's getting uh, beat on Fox News, those sorts of things, which they're two totally different campaigns that they appear to be running at this point. I mean, Putnam's going to small towns. He's holding breakfasts all over the state. Uh, and that's a very different approach to what DeSantis is doing. But I think Corcoran staying out of it uh, just sort of clarifies. I'm not sure in the end. The poll numbers were not looking very good for Corcoran. I mean, he's a big deal in Tallahassee, but once you get yeah. outside of the, yeah. of the bubble, uh, those numbers don't look so good. Uh, so uh, it, it's hard to see, uh, hard to know at this point whether that will have a whole lot of influence on moving any numbers in that race. Yeah. But it, it's uh, interesting to see how they're kind of painting each other, right? So the initial narrative was DeSantis was painting Putnam as the ultimate insider, right. and he was the outsider. But now you're seeing friction between DeSantis and the vice president, or at least there's some public statements going on there. I mean, it, it, it's it's challenging for both candidates on a few different branding fronts. What well, you, DeSantis what has clearly tried to to uh, tie himself to President Trump mm -hmm. and uh, you know the president has uh, tweeted and said th some things about DeSantis that indicate right. support but I think there's probably some blowback from Republicans in Florida uh, that you know don't want the president to be that involved 
in the DeSantis campaign right. uh, because it could hurt Putnam with the base, potentially. Right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, the, the, the president's role in all these campaigns is going to be fascinating right. this year. Right. We, I mean, going back to the U.S. Senate race, you got to expect the Democrats are just going to, uh, you know, when it comes to the general election, are going to try to tie uh, Governor Scott and the president. And uh, obviously, in a primary, that's a whole different dynamic right, because right. the president still has high approval ratings. Right. All right, uh, so among let's shift. Republicans. Let's shift from the Republican side. Let's go over the Democratic side. For me, it looks like the Florida Democratic Derby. Right, you've got you've got different candidates out front at any given time. Who's leading? Who's who's winning right now? Who's being successful at least? Who who knows? I mean, it really. <laughs> I mean, you know, the the only poll numbers we're seeing are being put out by campaigns. And right. you know it, that, to me, is impossible to, to figure out if they're valid or not. Uh, one interesting sort of scuttlebutt that's going around is about whether Patrick Murphy, former congressman, right. will, will enter the race. And potentially, with David Jolly, the former Republican congressman, uh, from down in Pinellas County is his running mate. I mean, that's an ultimate play for the, the the middle of the road, the MPA possibly. Well, I, mean, I think I think they're seeing they're look. You know, Murphy's people are probably looking at these poll numbers and seeing the same thing that I just said, which is who knows what's going on in this right. race, and they may see a, a, an opportunity to jump into it and try to you know a five person primary. Right. You don't have to win that many votes to win a five person primary. Right. So uh, you know that may be the calculation they're looking at. I don't know, you know, the way the, the electorate is so polarized though right now, it's, I, I'm, I'm curious about what they're seeing in terms of being able to get that NPA vote, right. you know, whether that whether that's strong it's enough at this point. It's the greatest experiment in politics right now. It's, I mean, I mean, if if those two ran and that that was their goal, I don't, I don't see any other race nationally where there's that kind of Okay, you're a Democrat, I'm a Republican. Let's go see if we can go get those guys and give them a little bit of what they're looking for. The Democrats, though, I think, you know, a lot of them are counting on, on really energizing the base or of, you know, uh, minority voters, uh, women voters, uh, and, and, and groups that, young voters. And I'm not sure that those voters at this point are looking for that sort of middle of the road. So. Uh, you know, I'm sure if Murphy gets in the race, he's going to do a ton of, they're going to do their due diligence to see that they can, can attract that kind of vote. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, the, the electorate is so polarized at this point, it's hard to know whether a, a middle of the road sort of coalition candidacy can, right. uh, you know, would appeal. Well, and then you see if start dropping out and endorsing others and, you know, I mean, that, 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 that could be the case, but they're all on the ballot at this point. So. Yeah, I mean, well, we'll know for sure on you know June 18th, I right. think, is the start of qualifying. Right. So we'll, all this will become more clear on the Democratic side. But at this point, you know, the four that are in there, Gwen Graham and Andrew Gillum and Chris King and Philip Levine, are showing no signs of, of, uh, of changing down. their plans. Yep. I mean, they're all over the place. So. All, right, all right, so let's turn our focus to the Attorney General's race. On the Republican side, you've got Frank White, you got Ashley Moody, and you got Jay Fant. They are battling it out like crazy. On the left, you've got Sean Shaw, as a clear leader. Anyone going to challenge Sean Shaw, or what do you see happening on the Republican side? Well, I think the thing on the Republican side is that Ashley Moody has clearly been more effective in raising money. Uh, if you look at the, if you just look at the finance sides of it, uh, uh, Frank White, the Republican, White, uh, right, uh, out of Pensacola, a state house member, and Jay Fant, both have put a lot of their own money into the race. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the, if you look at where money is coming from, Ashley Moody's getting it from a lot of sources, and it's not her own. So that's an indication that, to me at least, that she's been able to reach out around the state and 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 pull in money. Now that doesn't necessarily give her a financial advantage, but it may be an indication that she's been right. able to. Uh, to, to touch more bases than but, the other candidates. But we've candidates. seen statewide candidates come in with a big bank account and really double in, and they've pulled it out. I mean, well, Governor Scott other, was a good example of that in his governor's race. The other thing in the attorney general race, you don't need to raise as much money as you do to run for governor or to run for U.S. Senate. I mean, it's a it's lower profile, and so it, it um, you know, they may be able to soft finance, although that's... That's that's a yeah. pretty heavy test. But on the Democratic side, Sean Shaw does look right. like he's getting uh, you know a lot of the institutional support right. and and building that uh, base. I mean, trial bars behind him, uh, or at least some members right. of the trial bar. All right, we got about a minute left in the show. Let's 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 go down the races. Any other races you see shaping up as big battleground races? Well, I, I mean, I think the Republican primary and the Agriculture Commissioner race mm -hmm. is going to be interesting. There's you know yeah. uh, again, I'm not sure the candidates have a lot of name recognition across the state at this point, but they're out there working it. 
hard. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an interesting race to me. All these ballot initiatives are going to be really interesting to see how that plays out. 13 issues on the ballot, constitutional right. amendments, that's interesting. I mean, there's going to be some uh, important Senate, state Senate races, too. Yeah. Uh, top of the list is probably Dana Young and Janet Cruz down the Tampa sure. area, which is going to be a battle royale, I think. Yeah, yeah I think that will definitely be one to watch. Well, thank you for coming on and, and, and sharing with us your insights. We'll continue to tune into the News Service of Florida and uh, check out the latest. So thank you, Jim. All right, thank you. Appreciate you. That's all the time we have for today's show. Uh, make sure you hit us up on our social media feeds on Twitter and Facebook. And uh, we appreciate you tuning in and hope you like the new set. We'll see you soon.